Hey, good afternoon. Back to the Revit tutorial. I wanted to touch on something real quick. Um, wall sweep returns. Now, in Revit, in Revit, in, in the previous exercises that we, we were doing, we learned to include sweeps and reveals in the assembly. So, think of that. While we were in the process of doing that, um, a lot happened along the way. So, really quick, failure isn't almost as unpleasant as quitting. And sometimes it, take, it takes years before quitter tries again. Failing is like an F on your report card. Every time you fail and quit something, you rack up another F. You know what happens to kids in... Uh, well, you know what happens to kids when, when they get a lot of Fs. After a while, they stop trying. Adults are the same way. Now, modifying wall sweep returns, in the previous exercise, we learned how to include these sweeps and reveals in the assembly. Now, we're talking about collaboration here. In the assembly of a wall type. Now, however, you can also apply a sweep to a wall if it is needed only in a limited location. For example, you might need to create a chair rail molding in one special room. To accomplish this, go to the architecture tab in the ribbon and click walls and then wall sweep. Now in the status bar, you can notice it says mouse over a wall, mouse over. Mickey Mouse over, Minnie Mouse, let your fingers do the walking. And press the left mouse button to add the wall sweep or reveal to that wall. You can place a sweep on a wall vertically or horizontally by changing the placement option in the ribbon while the wall sweep tool is active. As you can see, uh, within the context of invoking it, we have some more tools that are our, uh, our disposal. Select a wall sweep type from the properties palette and pick the wall faces to which you would like to apply the sweep. If necessary, the sweep can be adjusted vertically in an elevation or section view. As you can see, you can change the profile and the casing that's selected is casing two, seven and a quarter by 13 sixteenths. But like we discussed, whatever profile is loaded, uh, you can see we have now, the material can be edited as well. That'll bring us back to our editor. And all the other compliance and identity data, you can see, are, are attached. The metadata is attached. So, uh, we don't need to change this this moment. But let's take a look. Let's zoom around our model. Hold down shift and push down on the, the mouse wheel. As you can see, you could incrementally bring it up along the uh, interior wall. And vertically, you could see that you could do the same based on that sweep, on that profile. If necessary, the sweep can be adjusted vertically in an elevation or a section view. If necessary, it can be adjusted vertically. And once we place it, we could we could do that. Moving wall sweeps between projects. And this goes for the sweeps that we discussed in the prior exercise. Although profile families from RFA files can be used in wall sweep type properties, the profiles. A wall sweep is a system family that exists only in a Revit project. New sweep types can be created only by using the transfer project standards tool from other projects. So you have to have it open. Or by duplicating existing types within your active project. But that goes without saying. We've been discussing that since the onset. And this is where the templates, templates come in. Additive or subtractive templates. 
what are you actually going to keep in each individual template, and then transfer those standards from template to template. Uh, they have to communicate to a certain extent. You have to assist in the bidirectional associativity. You have to. Uh, so uh, keep in mind that once wall sweeps are added to your project, they can be scheduled like any other project component, and we're going to get to scheduling, which is the real power behind this. Documentation tool. We create articulation. We're, we're creating articulation. We're articulating. We created a sample chair rail sweep on the interior face of the walls in this C13 wall articulation um, book companion data set file. In the full 3D view, orbit the models to view the interior faces. Let's take a look at how to customize the returns of a wall sweep. Now, this is generally going to be on the interior of this particular uh, cube that we have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to forestall that for a second. And I'm going to see if I can just drag this whole wall down. Yeah, I know, it's probably going to give us a little bit of a problem, but I do want to keep the wall, uh, but I, I don't necessarily want to have to look at it and, and hide behind it all the time when we're looking through this interior uh, millwork. I could, you know, I could just hide it for now. Grab this wall, right mouse click, hide in view by element, uh, and not by category. We have three selections, we can hide all of them if we want. So, as you can see, the molding's still there. And grips appear when you select it. But let's not get into that just yet. As you see, that's the uh, simple chair rail, the sample chair rail sweep. Select the sweep and it will display, display grips at each end. Zoom the view closer to the end of the sweep that is aligned with the end of the wall segment. Well, that's the wall I deleted. Wouldn't you know it? So that down here, within the view, I should say, reveal hidden elements. Click it, right mouse click, unhide in view by element, and then turn off reveal hidden elements, and it's back. Because it just so happens that it wants us to zoom in at where it joins. Now, we could close this view for now, or we'll uh, start getting cataracts. <clears throat> we need thicker glasses. We need thicker glasses or contacts. Your vision plays a very important part of this, and I'm going to let you know, because I know cubicles, it affects your, your lumbar support, your back. It has a lot to do with perspective, more than you know. Ergonomics play an important part of this, it, it, and that goes for everyone in the workplace. It goes for everyone in the workplace. Uh, and we're going to get into that because cubicles uh, are a, uh, could be a sinister thing. Let's pause for a second. We have some uh, semantics to discuss. If you uh, think too far into this box, you'll find uh, that these walls are funny things. And designing is a, is a funny uh, is a funny thing. Uh, telecommunications and uh, high frequency transmission rates. Uh, designing is 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 a, a, a interesting yet could be a perplexing endeavor because designing is, is like entering a room with a door that shuts behind you. In some instances, if you stay out of the room, you're okay to a certain degree if your intent is. But once you enter. You can feel, now, the word here is hopelessly trapped. Now, and that does happen in, in reality to folks. But if this, uh, you can also feel enchanted in this world of, uh, of space that we exist in. Not to get too philosophical, but uh, we're creating cubes and, and, and we're having uh, actors and blueprints, and, and these things, uh, these search engines and rendering engines, these photorealistic visualizations, uh, they uh, play an important part from every side of the spectrum. And it's an engine. It definitely is an engine. I suggest you, you do your homework, uh, because modeling techniques for basic walls, uh, it runs the gamut of many, many uh, aspects. 
Now, we're talking uh, core molding here in this chair rail. So, if you uh, select a sweep, it'll display the grips. Like I said, click the modify returns button in the contextual tab of the ribbon. If you select a sweep, you can modify, as you can see within the context of selecting it, you uh, invoke a contextual toolbar that allows you to modify the returns of the sweep and add or remove walls to the sweep. Now, returns the ends of the end of a sweep or reveal toward the wall or applies a straight cut. A positive return angle moves the end towards the wall. A negative value moves the value away from the wall. Adding and removing walls continues a sweep onto additional walls or removes segments from an existing sweep. Select the walls to continue to or select the walls to continue adding to or removing from the wall sweep. Now, you can change the angle of the return or return it to a straight cut as well. But for now, leave the options as return and angle equals 90. Now, in the options bar, modify return, you'll notice you have an option to uh, change the angle of the cut, the return. Now, just for ha-has, we can change that to 45. No, we can't. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Not with that tool. And I, I get too far ahead. I get too far ahead. You can change the angle of the return or return it to a straight cut, but for now, leave the options as return and angle at 90. Well, hmm, within the context of it, of selecting the sweep, the context of selecting the sweep, well, this shows this on the outer wall. The inner wall, this, the, the picture here has this uh, casing on the outer wall. So I believe it did indeed want us to actually put in a new casing on the exterior of the wall. So therein lies maybe uh, where there's a disconnect on my end. So wall sweep is default. Let's put it on the outside for a second. And I didn't get it. I said it. There it is. And I can select this wall as well. Now there's the uh, exterior, and that's a little more along the lines of what the, pic the picture in the uh, text uh, on 544 is showing. Now, select the sweep again, and then modify returns. This was at 90, right? Click on highlighted control. Click on highlighted control to apply the selected condition. Click on highlighted control. Well, ah, so there we go. At the at the profile, I have this on ninety. So it continued straight. Okay. I put it at zero. Now I'm on this face around the corner, or um, I can only select the face that has butted out, jutted out from the face of the wall. So now as you can see, it's You could actually trim it. And you have 
the ability to now have this cut different than a 90 degree angle. If it's acute, if it was an acute angle, well then you'd have more of an option to have that wall system swept around the angle that you need. So it's important to note that those angles will be uh, at play here. So what we could do is just refresh and remember that we're going to have uh, walls that, that aren't 90 degrees, they're not right angles in some instances, lots of instances. And just before we talked about this, but when we prefaced walls, we, we, we saw what we saw as far as um, various wall types and wall systems. Floor systems and roof systems, and this applies. And it applies to surfaces and meshes, polygons. The rendering engines utilize these uh, shaped waveforms to uh, bring us the colors that we see and the resolutions that we see in the uh, photorealistic images that we attempt to render and stream. So again, not to just not to go off on an Unreal or a, a Quake uh, Duke Nukem 3D Wizard of War Mr. Do uh, escapade, which I'd love to play a little Mario Kart. But there's a there's a video that I want you to listen to uh, regarding the similarities between these rendering engines on both sides of the spectrum. Um, we're going to pick up where this gentleman so eloquently puts it. This is important. Uh, we're in an office environment. We're in a, we're in a, a professional environment. We're in a, a world. Virtual uh, augmented reality or virtual reality. Your world, our world. Now let's just listen to what this gentleman has to say about um, blueprints and cube goals and cubes and moving piece, pieces around, uh, pawns around like chess pieces, and video gaming and first person perspective projections. This may be your forte. So with our evil cube pawn selected, we're gonna double click that. And what we wanna do is actually have a mesh. We wanna show something on the screen. And a blueprint, like we just created, a blueprint is like a series of components and meshes and things that make up something useful. So in our case, we want a cube that can do things and can be controlled by things, and then we can drag it into our, our game or dynamically load it. And so what we want to do is have a cube show up on here, visible to the player. So we're going to click Add Component, and we're going to go down to Cube. Now this cube is pretty huge, so I'm going to press, I'm going to click my cube here and press R. And then in the middle, making sure all three gizmos are selected, I'm just going to click and drag to make it smaller. And over here on the right-hand side, you can see it's 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0.5. Now, if you want to change your color, you can double-click this material here to open the material editor. You can click color, and then you can click the color down here to change your color to something different if you would like something different. In our case, we're going to change it to pink. I'm going to click apply and close out of the material editor. And that's, and that's why we're going to create a timer. We're going to right click here and we're going to type in set timer by function name. And we're going to type in a function name, whatever we want, and ours particularly is going to be called follow player, like so. And we want it to be called every one second, so we want it to repeat a lot, and then yes, we want to loop it. And then what I'll do is I'll right click here, and say add custom event. And we're gonna call it the exact same name that we just typed in. Follow player. Wonderful. So now what I'm gonna do is when this object comes to life, when begin play is called, an Unreal Engine is gonna call this for us. And the artificial intelligence which is very, very easy to program into, these pawns will take over. Now, he, he made a very, very important statement. He needed a cube. <laughs> he needed a cube. 
uh, and you will need a cube for that, um, for that game, and to convey that wall, to keep that player um, being followed by the evil cube. <laughs> so I want you to remember, the cubicle life, the cubicle life is something that you're going to have to triangulate either into or out of. Triangulation is an important aspect of this. So now, um, you will notice that the mouse pointer changes to a knife symbol. We're going to be whittling, not belittling, Hello, Moto. but we're going to be whittling. I have a call, and um, speaking of whittling, um, pluck string theory. 